The eyes of the Lord, the Bible said, is upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro. The eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. Yes, Lord. Any evil eyes in your house, in your family, on your body, they are terminated today. That amen does not sound like the amen of this prayer. Every evil eye that have entered your family, every evil eye upon any aspect of your life, they are terminated this morning. Every evil eye over your businesses, over your peace, over your progress, watching, watching, watching for you to be terminated. I decree that eyes is plucked out. That monitoring demon is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome your neighbor to your right, to your left. Welcome your neighbor. Have your seat before the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are still in the season of answer prayers. And by the special grace of God, I know that God is working something in the spirit. And as many that are connected, they are going to see the hand of God in Jesus' name. There is something everlasting that God is working within. And until we pay attention to what is beyond the material world, we may not be able to get exactly what God is doing. Subjecting your body to prayers. Subjecting your body to prayers. Subjecting your body to prayers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 27, he said, but I keep, I keep under. Somebody say, I keep under. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I keep under my body and I bring it to subjection, lest by any means, which I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Subjecting your body to prayers one of the factors for answer prayer is not just because you prayed it's the capacity to subject your body to prayers there are prayers that answer by chance there are prayers that answer because of a contraction with a particular grace but when you want prayer to answer in succession when you want to create an atmosphere of answered prayer, when you want to create an atmosphere where everything is possible, you must subject your body to prayers. The aspect of our body in the place of prayer cannot be removed. It cannot be de-emphasized. For prayers to be answered, the body must be subjected to prayer. The Bible recorded of Jesus praying in Gethsemane. The Bible said, as he prayed, the sweat from his body was as blood. The sweat, that means there was a physical exertion of energy. There was a pain in the body that transmitted into the spirit. Subjecting your body to prayer. We must understand that there are different realms in the spirit and there are different levels of experiences. There are different degree of liberty that we have attained spiritually. And the degree of the liberty that you have attained in the spirit is what will determine the kind of prayer results you begin to get. Amen? The degree of the liberty you attained in the spirit and the levels of your experiences is what will determine the kind of prayer results that you begin to get. That is why emphasis must be laid on you knowing God yourself. You knowing what? God yourself. You experiencing God yourself. Your altar is not my altar. 
the investment you have put on your altar will ultimately speak for you and the children that come from you. My altar can affect your altar for good. Because the Bible rightly said, it's an iron sharpness, what? Iron. For your spirit to enjoy continuous liberty, there are certain levels of prayer and subjection you must go through. So that it is not possible for the enemy to oppress, for the enemy to depress, or for the enemy to influence you and get away with it. Amen. In the realm of the spirit, we have oppression, we have depression, we have possession, and we have influence. Each of these can be negative or positive. So even if the devil cannot oppress, if the devil cannot possess, if the devil cannot depress, he can influence. He can what? Influence. But by the liberty of the spirit, you are able to come out of every of different degree of his workings. And it is as a result of your subjection to the spirit. Somebody say subject your body to prayer. Every decision not to pray is a manipulation. Is somebody here? Every decision not to pray is what? 100% manipulation. Every decision not to pray. They are praying you are yawning. There's a manipulation. For you to subject your body to prayer, you must be a sanctified man. Somebody says sanctified. And sanctification by the spirit of by the spirit of God. Sanctification and consecration. Why do I have consecration? Because it shows you that the responsibility lies on you, not on God. The responsibility does what? Lies on you. In 2 Corinthians 7 1, it says, Having there for these promises. Having therefore these promises, let us therefore sanctify, cleanse ourselves from every filthiness of the spirit and of the flesh. Of the spirit and of the flesh, let us cleanse ourselves. Sanctification, consecration unto God. The height of your prayer is in the sanctification and the purification that you go through. It is the first and reasonable sacrifice you must bring to God. Amen? In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it said we should present our body a living what? Sacrifice. A living sacrifice. So the, the first reasonable sacrifice, that is why when a child of God is born again, and the child of God used to be an harlot before, and you, the child of God that used to be an harlot now becomes born again with the spirit of God in her or in him. Maybe he's a prostitute. And at that time that he became born again, if you preach holiness to him without the foundation of a thorough prayer life, what you are doing is that you are crucifying him the more because there is no way to be able to do it. There is no what? No way. There is no way. In fact, it can change all his clothes or change all our clothes. But within, it begins from what? Inside. So the person can change physically and the change from outside cannot affect inside. It is the change from inside that affects outside. The change of God is from within to without. No true consecration can be achieved by any other means except through fastings. Somebody say fastings and prayers. I'm emphasizing the S. Amen. Fastings and prayers. There are things you are waiting on God to come and help you do. Till Jesus comes, He's not coming to do it. Are we here? Did we hear? Let us dear 
therefore cleanse ourselves. Let us therefore cleanse ourselves. A deep responsibility, heavy one. Consecration without the knowledge of consecration will lead to frustration. Consecration without the knowledge. I don't know who has ever processed palm oil before. Who has processed palm oil before in the village? When you don't have the knowledge, can you do it? You get it all wrong. So consecration, there is a spiritual know-how to be consecrated unto God. For everything that is called addiction, amen? For whatever you call addiction, maybe drugs, there are so many of you today, you are under the power of drugs. You have been turned to a slave. Even though you don't want to take drugs, you find yourself taking it. You borrow money to buy drugs. There are many who are under the perversion of alcohol. Sexual addictions. I was speaking to one after service. I called the lady. I said, Come. She does not have feeling for man. She has feeling for only women like her. Only women like her. Now, let me make you understand that even though you go through deliverance, you cannot be free indeed. Are you here? You're free indeed will come when you are delivered and you deliver yourself. Amen? It will come when you are delivered and you what? Begin to deliver yourself. Because something was cast out which was the manipulator. And if your spirit does not rise above the realm of that same power, it will only wait for some time. It will come to rest again. There must be consecration to have answer prayer. Iniquity is a mystery. Somebody say mystery. So it is not psychologically understood as a bad habit. You know they will call it what? Bad habit. Iniquity is a mystery. So also is godliness. Iniquity is a mystery. So also is what? Godliness. So when you find people misbehaving, there is a mystery of iniquity behind it. A mystery because it is a secret. Mysteries are secrets. Mysteries are hidden. And it takes the power of God to decode what is behind it and what is the solution to this. Iniquity is a mystery. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it said the mystery of 1 Timothy in chapter 3 and in verse 16, and he said, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So godliness is a mystery. Godliness is a mystery so that when this mystery is revealed to you, certain, certain secrets of the kingdom of God that are now open to you and you practice it. You don't just stumble into it. You practice it and it begins to work for you. Then the other life, the other life, which is the mystery of iniquity that used to subject you, you now begin to ask, what happened? Why am I no longer a slave to this thing? Because there is a mystery that has been dissolved. There's a mystery that has become open. There's a mystery you've now practiced that has subjected another mystery under it. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of what? Godliness. So also, iniquity is a mystery, but great is what? The mystery of godliness. That's what? God was made manifest in the flesh. Sin of angels. He walked upon the earth. So what is the implication of this mystery of godliness? That the God kind of life can be manifest in man, so that a man can live pleasing unto God. A man can manifest the supernatural from the natural. A man can manifest what? The, super, the supernatural is not of God. It's for the man of God. Is somebody here? The supernatural is not of what? The thing you call supernatural is natural to God. So from the natural, we manifest supernatural. So the things you are thinking, they are the supernatural of God. They are the natural of God. That is his order. That is the order which God works. So it's not a supernatural to him. 
It is men that are supposed to manifest the supernatural within our natural. So a man will hold this paper and turn it to five. When a man of God holds paper and turn it to five, he will say he's a magician. From which realm did the magician bring it? It is from the realm of the spirit. It is the capacity of God. Which is disappear. You will not, you will not say, you, will, you say get power. Let a man of God disappear. Didn't Philip disappear? Didn't Jesus disappear? But let a man of God disappear today. You say now marry. <laughs> there are dimensions before Adam that are going to be manifested before Christ come. It takes consecration to experience this order of God. It is for men who are interested. The mystery of iniquity does already work. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. Men are held in bondage. Bondage. Pornography. Bondage. The eyes of God cannot behold iniquity. Call it for 100 hours. You will ascend to the realm to which you are free. To which you have experienced liberty in the spirit. The devil is so smart to the point that even if some people don't watch pornography, he gives them pornography in the dream. And they enjoy it. There was a young lady that was with me in the office and said, you used to have this dream, you have this dream, and you used to tell yourself that you don't, you don't need man. In fact, before you sleep, you will tell that spirit to come. Because the spirit will satisfy you. She began to cry. One of our mothers here brought her here. And I told her, I said, do you know what that spirit has done to you now? That spirit has brought a curse in your family. She said, how? I said, it was that same spirit that told you, you don't need a man. There was a day you were in the house. Your junior brother came into the house, saw you naked, and you dragged him to yourself. You slept with him. The same spirit that told you, you do not need a man, carried you to your junior brother to sleep with him. Bandage. And now you are looking for husband. A cause has been enacted. Tell your neighbor, say, there is no addiction that the Holy Ghost doesn't have answer to. It is the spirit of liberty. There is no sin. No ma In fact, commit that sin for 20 years. Once you meet Jesus, it can be dissolved. It must die. The power behind it is the knowledge that you are exposed to. You know, today, one of the basic problems of believers is we are not ready to pray. We are not ready to encounter God. We are only ready to, to do the act, the act of the woman with the issue of the blood. Touch and go. That is the act of the woman with the issue of blood. Touch and go. Believe you me, many people touched Jesus that day. But it was a sovereign move. It was what? A sovereign, it was just a sovereign move. How long are you going to wait for the sovereign move of God? There are things you can cause to happen. You cause it to happen. There is something eternal that God is building inside of you. Give him room. You must understand that your will has a capacity to choose what God does not choose. Your will has what? A capacity to choose what God does not choose. This is the reason why you have to subject your body. Your body cannot be fast for 30 days. Every day, wow. Every day, wow. And you think you will please God in 30 days. You can't. There are things, there are opportunities you must give to the spirit to have expression. So that through that expression, you can leverage on it. But when you don't give the spirit an opportunity for an expression, you are always satisfying the flesh. It kills you before your time. To live without God is death. After salvation, we must understand that there is a need to educate a believer into the cost of salvation. Many of us don't know the cost of what? Salvation. When the believer does not understand the cost of salvation, he will not understand what he needs to keep his salvation. 
he will not understand what salvation demand of him he will not understand what he needs to drive into and become in God you must understand that you are first of all bought with a price somebody say bought so you are bought with a price and you willingly offered yourself to be bought that's why you say Jesus I accept you as my Lord and Savior so you are bought with a price and you willingly offered yourself and the Bible said let us therefore live unto God let those who are alive live unto God not unto ourselves. this is a realm that only the man that is bought with a price understands only a man that is what bought with a price understands and this is what lays the foundation for a holy life when you don't understand that you are bought, there is no, you don't feel you owe anything. It's a debt you can't pay that someone paid. Then gave you freedom in him. And therefore you have to live for him. Gave you freedom in him. And you have to live for him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 15 the Bible says and that he died for all and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him who died for them and rose again the effect of your prayers is not going to be on the obedience that you have in God. The effect of your prayer will be on what? The obedience that you have displayed. That you are displaying. What your prayers can do will now be different from what the prayer of another can do. Even though you are praying the same prayer. So there are people that you are praying the same prayer, the effect of your prayer is going to be different. By the reason of the obedience, by the reason of the style of response to God. Your consecration is what will determine how deep you are baptized into the name. Somebody say baptized into the name. There is a baptism into the name of Jesus Christ. The depth of the baptism is what determines the command in the name. It is not just calling the name. To call the name, anybody can do that. Anyone that call upon my name shall be what? Saved. But when it comes to the name giving you certain kinds of results your baptism into the name is the result of your consecration the things you have refused to be consecrated of are going to be the stumbling blocks that keeps you afloat and not buried within amen for you to be consecrated unto to God in prayers, your altar must burn. Tell your neighbor, say your altar must burn. It takes a burning altar. It takes a burning altar. Particles are separated by the degree of heat that is applied. For any impurity in a matter to be separated, there must be levels of heat that will be applied the unavailability of the heat will continue to permit the particle to exist the unavailability of the right kind of heat will continue to allow the particle to exist you must burn the Bible said the spirit of man is what the candle of the Lord 
The spirit of man is what? The candle of the Lord. So, the man is the candle. That's the implication of that scripture. The man is what? The man is the candle. The spirit is the fire upon the candle. So, the candle itself is useless without the light upon it. So, the candle must burn for any impurity to be destroyed. Now, if the candle burns, it is not destroyed. It is reshaped. It is not what? Destroyed. It is what? Reshaped. It has capacity to be reformed and separated from impurity and changed into another color, another form. In Leviticus chapter 6, the Bible says something here. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12 speaking and the fire upon the altar shall be born in it it shall not be put out somebody say it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering now hear me in verse 9 of that same scripture verse 9 it said command Aaron and his son who are the chosen priest somebody say the chosen priest now, Aaron and his children were the priests unto God then. But now we are what? A chosen generation. A royal what? Priesthood. So we have obtained the priesthood of Aaron and his children. Of Moses. We have obtained that priesthood. He said the fire must not burn out. The fire the reason for oppression, the reason for possession, the reason for pestilence. The Bible said, I will not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow by day or for the pestilence. Sicknesses come in the night. The sickness of the day is a manifestation of what happened in the night. It is because certain fire is not burning. Zechariah 2 5, he said, I now will build a wall of fire and around her, and I will be the glory within. So the glory cannot be tampered with if the fire is around. What we have today is the believer that has fire within, but there's no fire around. The minimum promise of God is to give you a fire within. What is this fire within? The Holy Ghost. He said, The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that dwells in us. The Bible said, God is fire. He said, Our God is a consuming fire. So if He shed His love abroad in our heart, He gave us fire within. So it is your responsibility to grow your fire without. To a place where you become consuming. He said, The fire must not go out. Nine. It is the bond's what? Offering. Because of the burning upon the altar. All night. All night. Unto the morning and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. If you want to deliver yourself from bad dreaming. You want to deliver yourself from sickness. You want to deliver yourself from continuous constant attacks. You must burn. You must what? You must burn. You must burn spiritually. And for you to burn, it takes a staying power. Somebody says staying power. There is a staying power that you need. There is a staying power that you need. Listen. The Bible said that Jacob was left with God. Right? And he wrestled with him through the night. Right? And when he saw that it was almost day. When he saw that it was almost day. The angel, I mean God, gave up. God what? Gave up. And he said, what is your name? If, you, if a man's name is not changed spiritually, his life cannot change. What is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. He said, from today, you are no longer Jacob, but Israel. And it took a man to wrestle with God. There are problems in your house, problems in your body, problems in your dream that will continue to make your life look the same way. You have told yourself you have prayed, you have prayed. There are different kinds of fire. There are different kinds of heat. Born 
through the night. Born through the night. When you stand constantly before the Lord, if you cannot do a dry fast, just do a simple fast. But born through the night. If you cannot do a dry fast, let me tell you, if you have an addiction of smoking, I want to address serious issue this morning. Because there are serious issues among believers that we use clothes to cover. And we look sanctimonious. When you were, when you born before the Lord, in the fast and prayer, if you are addicted to drugs, even if you can't do dry fast, just born 12 to 6 for 21 days, the task for that iniquity will die. You will look for it, you won't see it. You will try to do it, you won't be able to do it. But when you relax, when you over relax, it will come back. You can't born before the Lord in a dry fast for seven days and you tell me you are still addicted to something. No, it's not possible. It takes three hours before the presence of God for your body, your soul, and your spirit to be separated. And another three hours to be on fire. If you must go far, you must pray. If your children will not repeat your challenge, you must pray. The world is a battle. Whatever you do not pray to get, you can't keep it. Doubt it anywhere. Challenge it anywhere. You must raise an altar for your possession to be secured. Everywhere Abraham encountered God, he raised an altar. He raised an altar. Everywhere Abraham encountered God, he was raising an altar. He never knew he was. Abraham was the one that possessed Canaan. The only children only came to inherit it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He said, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God. It is he that given the power to get with that he may remember that which is sworn unto your fathers as it is to this day. Altars were raised in the journey of Jacob. He got to a place where there were stones and he slept in the night. And the Bible said, and angels began to what? Ascend and descend. So it takes a, an intervention from the heart for the fluidity between the physical and the spiritual to be activated. So a man has already raised an altar that his children's children is going to come to leverage on. There are altars they laid for you today is mommy water. That is what you are leveraging. You are still dealing with some of them. And yet your prayer life cannot solve your problem. people are encouraged to pray, they get discouraged. They feel it is because of the lack of anointing. No, anointing is just fertilizer. Fertilizer is not everything. <laughs> anointing is just what? Fertilizer. Fertilizer is not what? Everything. After you fertilize, you must put jam inside. Have you seen fertilizer that kill jam? There are problems that will not die because you are under the anointed. You deal with it. You must pray. And in that night, one night, angels began to ascend and descend because a father had raised an altar. A father had raised an altar. So in that place, if that young man prayed, he has an open heaven. There are clouds that are upon family today by the altars of the fathers. If the investment of the sacrifices in your father's house is still more than your life, they will still prevail. When we are praying in the spirit, people don't know that we are creating value. You are creating what? Value. You are doing what? You are creating value. Subjecting your body to prayers. You must learn the language of sacrifice. Somebody say the language of sacrifice. There is a language of sacrifice. The Bible said he prayed with groanings, which cannot be what? Uttered. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, he said, We know not what we ought to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with what? Groanings. So Jesus understood the language of sacrifice. Lamat Shabbatani. 
my father, why have that for, forsaken me? Even in a forsaken state, he didn't reject his assignment. He still had option there. If the language of sacrifice is not part of your life, you will only end up what ends with you. You end up with what ends with what? You. To have a transgenerational effect, you must have a language of what? Sacrifice. So that you don't end up doing only what ends with you. The atmosphere for continuous answer prayer is on the leverage of the language of sacrifice. Continuous prayer and sacrifice in the spirit. Certain things don't just happen. They are caused to happen. Certain things don't just what? They don't just happen. They are caused to happen. They are caused to happen. When we begin to speak in the language of sacrifice, we are building eternal. Somebody say eternal. You are building what hand cannot destroy. What what? Hand. Now, a man that understands sacrifice, you don't build what people can destroy. You are not, you, it is what is written concerning you from the foundation of the world. When you speak in the language of sacrifice, you cause heaven to have an opportunity for expression upon the earth. You cause what? Heaven to have an opportunity for expression upon the earth. The devil is looking for opportunity everywhere. And this can only be achieved when you understand value. Somebody say understand value. Many of us don't understand value and we don't understand what we have. Having a thing is one thing. Understanding the value of what you have is another. If only the servant that was given one talent could understand the value of one. That in the material world, it takes only a thing to produce many things. For God gave his only begotten son and he got sons. One to get more. If only he understood that he that had one and he that had five before the father, it is only the grace that differentiates them. What they have, the results can be the same. The results can be the same. Understand value. You may have no gift other than speaking in tongues. Speak it. You are building what is eternal. You are building what no ma- the wizard and the warlocks of the father, father's hands cannot stop it. You are repairing foundations even as far as the days of your generation unknown. If the foundation be destroyed, the Bible says, what shall the righteous do? The righteous must build on another foundation and uproot the whole foundation. A statue that is superior to the foundation that is being built over decades, over centuries. And it's working in me. Something eternal is working in me. Something eternal. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Is working in me. Something eternal is working in me. Something forever. Oh, it's working in me. Something eternal is working in me. Something forever. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 
Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10. Genesis 4 and verse 10. And he said, What hast thou done? What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried. The, the blood of thy brother's bl blood cried. What gave capacity to that voice, to be able to have a voice, is the sacrifice of the blood. The sacrifice of what? The blood. There are many, once they die, their blood is silenced. There is no sacrifice behind the life. Is somebody here? In the book of Revelation, the Bible said, And the blood of the saint cried, Lord, Lord, when? When are you going to avenge us? So blood has capacity to speak. Lord, when are you going to bring to pass those things that you promised me? When are you going to bring to reality? You think when Abraham died, his voice died. God promised Abraham, I will make you father of all nations. How many sons did he have? One. So you think when he died, his voice slept. His voice never slept. His voice kept speaking. Until God brought to life. There are many dealings of God with you. And promises that you are not going to live to see. It's not a cause. Because whatever God is doing with a man goes beyond the lifetime of that man. So it is an error for you to feel that everything that needed to be done and needed to be done will be done in your lifetime. No. Your prayer goes beyond lifetime. Lifetime is too short for eternity to manifest. For eternity to conclude a case, lifetime of a man is too short. The voice of thy brother cries from the region of the dead. Why? Because there was a sacrifice that was what? Accepted of Abel. You must understand value. That is the voice of the spirit. The language of sacrifice is the voice of the spirit. When you do not ascend in the spirit, your voice has no value. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse 10, it says, In the realm of the spirit, there are what? Many voices, and none of them is without what? Significance. In the realm of the spirit, there are many. So there are many voices that are speaking. There are many voices that are still crying for justice of 100 years ago. There are many voices that are crying. Your father was a slave trader. His son is supposed to be a slave. So for, the, for your voice to silence that which come from the spirit, you must ascend in the spirit. There are voices that are crying that the land you are there, you got there by war. And you destroy all the nation there. So why should you survive? In the realm of the spirit, there are many voices. None of them is without significance. Raise your voice in the language of the spirit. It is what you must consciously do. You concertedly do. You, you put in a lot of concentration. If you don't place value on the language of sacrifice, you can't benefit from it. It is what gives opportunity to the forces of heaven to have an expression upon the earth. And there are values that must be accum accumulated in certain areas of your life before certain things are made to happen. There are places that prayers have gone ahead of them for 100 years. That even if nobody, nobody prays in that place for 100 years, things will begin to continue to happen for good. You must understand the language of the spirit. Putting your body under subjection of the Holy Ghost. We don't want to pray in the Holy Ghost. You don't want to. There are many believers who find it offensive. They find it offensive. You don't know scripture. How then do you understand the power of God? Jesus speaking. He said, ye err because ye know not the scripture and the power of God. So it takes you knowledge to err and also the experience of power. Ye err because you know not the scripture and the power of God. It is given unto you more for a personal prayer life, a personal fellowship with God. It is given unto you to have access to your angels.
putting your body under the subjection of prayer. You must understand that God will never take you seriously until you are consistent. God takes no man seriously until he is consistent. There must be levels of consistency in doing the same. The Bible says, and Jesus rose early in the morning to pray. Early in the morning to pray. Early in the morning. You can read that over and over in the scriptures. The apostles, they gave themselves to fastings and prayer. It's not to fasting. Fastings. So it does, it's not a church thing. It is a personal thing. God said, you can't impress spirit easily. For you to subject your body under prayer, you must learn to write under the wings of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, write on the wings of the Spirit. There are many things that are going to look like impossible for you. Why? Because you are doing it naturally. Okay. Who has operated the Lister engine here before? Lister, Lister. Why are we behaving like this now? Who has, who has seen a Lister engine before? And you see the way they wind it. Now, how easy it is to begin to wind? Very what? Difficult. That is exactly how it is when you begin your spiritual journey. What will give you advantage is if you insist and you are consistent. That little energy that you put in that seems as if it will not even grind the first wind. Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Then you will see that it will multiply in folds that you may not even be able to keep up with. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is not what we pray for. It's what we step into. Because it's given. It's given. It's given. It's already given. You don't pray for grace. Maximize the grace you have now. And see increase when you get to the elastic point. Maximize the grace you have now. If you can pray five minutes, continue five minutes consistently. You can't continue five minutes for seven days. You discover you are already operating in 15 minutes. Without praying for the grace. Your soul. See, if you do not become a son of God, you cost it. He gave them power to become the son of God. But not all of us are sons of God. Devil, the church. What? Sons of devils, sons of belly are in the church. The spirit that manifests in you is what determines the son of who you are. The spirit of God manifested in Peter. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Six verses after, the spirit of the devil manifested in the same Peter. And he said to him, Satan, get behind me. The spirit realm is very porous. There can be depression, oppression, influences. But your liberty in the spirit is what determines what happens to you. Ride on the wings of the spirit through your consistency. If you have not done three days dry, don't start by doing three days dry. If not, you will land in the hospital. If you have not done seven days fasting, don't do and try it. You must have consistently done six to six for some time. Then, certain degree of grace has been released unto you. Then, very easy, you can then maneuver into another kind of fast. Into another kind. There are those that when they do one day vigil, they become like a chicken that contracted the disease in the whole day. It's because the grace is not there. When the grace is released, you will do it and you will be as if you did nothing. Right on the wings of the Spirit. The Bible said, for the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Your flesh can only be strong when you are riding on the wings of the Spirit. So when you see a man who says, I'm praying for 10 hours, don't think it's because he has strength. Amen? It's because he's leveraging on the availability of the Holy Ghost that he has consistently tapped into. Shot fire. fire. The availability of the Holy Spirit that he is consistently tapping into. Somebody got tired of writing. There are things you can't touch in the spirit until you get to the limit of your flesh. Amen? There are things you can't what? Touch in the spirit 
until you get to the limit of your flesh. There are things you can't touch in the spirit. Some days ago, some I think a year ago or two, two years ago, I was praying. And I was praying earnestly in the spirit and for several days. And as I was praying consistently, seeking the face of God for his power and a healing grace. And 13 hours every day. Seventh day, I entered into a realm. And I saw one of God's general. And he said, what did you come and do in this realm? Only spirit enter here. I could not utter a word. I was just looking at him. He shook his head. He said, you this small boy, what did you come and do in this realm? Only spirits enter here. Listen to me. Jesus did not walk on the water as a flesh and blood. He stepped upon the water as a spirit. There are dimensions you can't enter until you get to the limit of your flesh. There are things you need to touch to secure a future for a generation. And from that day, from after that encounter, I began to see diverse healing testimony in the ministry. It was an encounter. There was a level of prayer. I prayed in the, in the month of December and the Lord appeared to me. When the Lord appeared to me, I was not expecting him to come. I was expecting maybe just, I'll just see something, you know. Let me tell you something. The prophetic is different from hearing from God. If not, the prophet will not pray to God to speak to him. Because he already has the gift to hear. So hearing from God is different from the gift of what? Prophecy. So every child of God should have the capacity to hear. Somebody didn't get what I said just now. So every child of God will have to exercise it at a certain point. Either you're a bishop or pope, you must exercise God. Speak to me. In fact, there are times God will not speak to you, even though you will be prophesying to people. He will not speak. You will have to wait and wait. When you did not expect, He will speak. The Lord spoke to me last year. I never knew what God was speaking to me early last year. He was using it to save me from trouble of this year. Mama, how many months did I wait and wait and wait? I said, God said I should travel. God said I should. Almost four months. I said, no, God said I should travel. Is this God? He will say, travel now. Go to Abuja. Who am I going to see in Abuja? I said, go to Abuja. Who am I going to meet in Abuja? I said, go to Abuja. If I did not go to Abuja last year, I booked a flight, 65,000 naira, just like that. Nobody to go and visit. I said, Abuja, oh, I've come. Lord, you say I should come. I've come. There are places, listen, your capacity to hear God is not only your ears. Your hand can hear God. When your hand is given, it's hearing God. When your leg take a walk, you do not know where he's leading. The Bible said, and the spirit took him to the wilderness. He didn't say God said he should go to the wilderness. He said the spirit took him. So his leg walked to the wilderness. His, ear, his leg was hearing God and his ears was not hearing God. So he will be asking questions. Where am I going to? Because his eyes will be speaking to him. But his leg was hearing God. So God can function through any part of your body. In Isaiah 54, he said, He has quickened my tongue to speak a word in season to him that is waiting. He opened my ear to hear a word in season. There is a capacity to walk in the spirit. It's a walk in the spirit that ye will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There's a capacity to speak in the spirit. There's a capacity to see in the spirit. So it's not limited to hearing. There are moments I walk in the church like this without hearing. Then I said, there's someone here that is having so, so, so sickness. Many times if you walk, it is where I stop that that thing will be. Many times if you watch, it is that place I stop. Is it that? Here or the, that is where the case I just mentioned would be. So it was not my ear, it was my leg. Somebody say, My leg move. Say, so Holy Spirit, walk in me. Something eternal. 
until your flesh get to the limit of his capacity, his strength is not made manifest in your weaknesses. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. That's the last scripture I'm taking for today. Only your strength is not going to make you. Amen. We focus on trying to build our strength. We focus on how to build our strength. But you are not made by your strength alone. You are made by your weaknesses. <laughs> you are made by what? Your weakness. When you present your weakness to God, it becomes an instrument in His hands for the liberty of men. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So there, it is not everything in your life that God is going to remove. You must understand that now. It is not what? In fact, God did not kill all the enemies of Israel for a reason. It was by their own disobedience, first of all, the children of God. Amen? And he left them alive so that they would continue to awaken the Israelites. Even though it was their error, he commanded them. It was the Benjamites that refused to do that sentence. So it is not everything in your life. Your poverty can be the reason why you will keep praying. And his strength will be made perfect in the weakness of being poor. Maybe being poor in finance, being poor in health, being poor in speech. But when you see that without you God I can't do anything. You will take yourself to the altar and say come in me so that I can be. Come in me so that I can be. So God it's not going to deal with every of the issues. There are issues that will keep bringing you. You are not going to be made because you don't have a weakness. You are not going to be made because you don't have a problem. You are not going to be made because all your enemy die. How many of them have died? You are going to sometimes be made because enemies surround you. And the day enemies, you can't see them again. That can even be your downfall. Many are not brought down by the lack of enemy. Many are destroyed because there was no enemy to wake them. You are not here. <laughs> when they told monkey pray, he refused to answer amen to prayer. When battle came, he began to say amen. Am, 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 am. Till today, he's still saying am. God is pouring fire on your altar this morning. God is pouring fire on your altar this morning. In this season of Pentecost, there is a fire that will burn upon your life you can't recover from. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our body must be subjected to prayers. What God is willing to do in you is beyond you. It's beyond your family that you have been crying about. Your impact is beyond your circumference. Your coast also have been enlarged to touch much more. Rise up on your feet this morning. Say, Holy Ghost, let my altar live. Let my altar come alive. Pray that prayer if you want to pray. It's burning in me. Something eternal. Let my altar come alive. Something forever. Zika pronatelia. Are you praying? 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 Brother, da 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 da. Holy Spirit, Aya, Holy Spirit, 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 My Father, my Maker, let my altar. Let my altar live. Let my altar live. Let my altar live. Let my altar not die. Let my altar not die. Pray that prayer earnestly. There are many things you will have 
to carry it is by the altar can your altar carry the answer can your altar carry the answer you desire holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit holy spirit